folks on the other end of your 911 call deal with thousands of life and death situations every single day. So it may surprise you that right now we have no state standards to train and certify people doing that job. This week is National Public Safety and Telecommunications Week, and WGN's Courtney Hall takes us behind the scenes to look at how the most urgent calls are handled and at a new push for state guidelines. We've had some recent cases that have shined the spotlight on 911 call handlers questioning their qualifications and how they're trained. And what we found is for each call center in Illinois, it could be different. Now there's a push to change that. Could you say obviously? Yeah, when you answer the question. 19 year old Quintonio Legreer called for help three times last December, but he was hung up on by the very people who were supposed to help 911 operators. I need the police. LeGreer was shot to death by police, and two 911 call takers were suspended without pay for their actions. You want a safe city, and you want the citizens to be safe, then you have to have some workers there with some compassion and hearts. Community activist Andrew Holmes says he's had numerous problems calling 911 in Chicago, most recently when his friend was robbed at gunpoint while working at the Shell station on 87th and State. He immediately told me. There's nothing we can do for you. Click. The audio from a scanner site revealed 15 minutes passed before police were deployed to that robbery. That's over 15 minutes. And they called back a couple times. I just got back from lunch. So, what type of training do emergency operators get? Turns out the training varies across the state and the nation. In many cases, qualifications are just a high school diploma and phone skills before getting on the job training. If you get your hair cut, it's being cut by somebody that holds a state um, license to cut hair, but yet the person answering your 911 call is not required to have a state certification. Brian Tegmeyer is the executive director of DUCOM, the DuPage County 911 Center. He also serves on the National Emergency Number Association, also known as NINA, which is working to get a state certification program in Illinois. About 18 other states already have one. We're also working on a national initiative with the National 911 Program Office to establish at least minimum guidelines for telecommunicator training for the entire nation. The complexity and the scope and the breadth of what we have to deal with here is far different from, from most other municipalities. True, Chicago is unique. <laughs> At OEMC, there are roughly 500 operators and anywhere from 65 to 85 working the floor at one time. Last year, there were 40 unpaid suspensions for 911 operations, and right now, there are about 20 open investigations involving possible disciplinary actions for 911 dispatchers and call takers. We're one of the very few in the United States that dispatches police fire and ambulance all under one house. Gary Shankel has been at the helm for the past five years. He says they get more than 5 million 911 calls every year, sometimes getting up to 20,000 calls in a day. Here's how those calls are handled. First, a caller talks to a level one police call operator. They're often referred to as 911 call takers. They take all the calls in the city. That call taker helps determine if it's an emergency and what kind of emergency. For example, if a crime is in progress, the call is immediately transferred to a police dispatcher who communicates with any one of 13 police zones in the city. Or the 911 call taker can transfer a call to a fire and medical dispatcher who then communicates with fire departments and ambulances. One of my very first calls as a 911 call taker was of a man on fire. I could actually hear him in the background uh, screaming. Jamie's been working at OEMC for the past 18 years. Here at OEMC, call takers get three months of training. If they're promoted to dispatcher, that's six months of training. On a busy night, we can get calls coming in nonstop, but they're all different. She says the key to doing this job is staying calm, multitasking, and using good judgment. It's a very stressful job, and it is not for everybody. After the LeGreer incident, the mayor called for additional training. We're working directly with, with mental health professionals. They're helping us identify earlier on in the call where we might be able to discern whether or not it really is a, a, an appropriate response for a crisis intervention team. Thank you very much. Now, there's a new director of OEMC, Alicia Tate Natto, comes from the Illinois National Guard to take over and oversee those changes.
for the first time ever, a 911 administrator has been appointed by the governor to develop, implement, and oversee a unified 911 system for all areas outside of big cities. Eventually, Nina hopes that includes certified training for all municipalities. Back to you.